Ian, good to see you. And yeah, listen, um, I just, as you know, I just came from uh, uh, Wakanda, over there, you know, used to be Grahamstown, uh, visiting, uh, you know, Sheppy, you know, Sheppy and his son. His son is now, really, he's going, he's going to the roads, he's a musician, stuff like that. So we had some interesting talks like that. So you know, when I travel from East to Cape, I go to the Sheppy, now it's Sheppy and his son. And when I come here, I got to see you, of course, you know, and Hanan, you know, everybody like that. Um, I, I'll mention, we'll mention Raul right now. Uh, hey, Linda, hey, good to see you. Um, you, it's, you related an incident that happened with your son, uh, Raul. Now, I know Raul since he was, well, since he was born, <laughs> before he was born. Uh, and we, I remember we went to a movie one time, I forgot what this thing was, some big explosive movie, you know, guy's movie. How old was he then? A couple years ago, about three, four years ago? Yeah, he must have been about seven or eight. Seven or eight, yeah. And you know, he he had to leave the theater. It was too loud for him. He was, and I said, ooh, and my immediate thought was he's very sensitive. And he's like, you know, when I say autistic, I mean, a good, I mean in a good way, you know, like borderline autistic, you know, it's a thinking child, whatever you have it. So just give me that background of, 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 you know, of Raul, the son. Now, please relate that, uh, what, what happened to him the other day. What this tells us about, about Sure. Him. So the school that he's at has, a, has an extramural program which mm -hmm. works on a, they're independent. They don't have activities built into the school day. Mm -hmm. They have these vendors that come in and offer. So ballet and drama and sports and whatever. So they've recently started uh, showcasing this new martial art. It turns out it is the martial art that the Israeli Defense Force deploys. Craig Magyev or something, I can't get the name properly. With the Mossad? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's this ultra violent. Well, hold on a second. But that, you know, it's interesting because. Every time I hear something happening, it's always a, this was massage trained or whatever, blah, 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 blah. So this is kind of interesting. This globally, I've heard of it. Go on. We're in South Africa. We're in South Africa right now in Cape Town. But go ahead. Previously, my son was doing judo as part of the school, as, as, as an extracurricular. Really enjoyed it. Self defense mm -hmm. and self discipline and you know all those kinds of good qualities that you get from a judo or a karate. Mm -hmm. And because of the pandemic, all physical contact activities were uh, stopped. So now they're looking at bringing back this, at bringing a martial art back, but this particular form. And so the, they had somebody come and demonstrate to the kids mm -hmm. what this was about. And the focus was on how you would gouge somebody's eyes out, or you would crack their throat, or you could break their spine. And the language that was used was violent language, and they in fact spoke about how you could kill somebody. So this is a primary school. So for me, the first thing is, this is a very inappropriate extramural activity. Uh, it's very different from you know, the judo kind of scene. It's very violent. And then discovering that it's okay. actually a tool of the Israeli Defense Force made me wonder. Well, I'm, I'm not worried about the, 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 what Defense Force it is. My problem is this, when you say that, remember, I take martial arts all my life, everything like that. You know, martial arts is always about self-discipline. This isn't like self. This sounds like, ow. Yeah. So, it, it, so, so his response to this demonstration um, was that he, 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 he couldn't cope. He mm -hmm. couldn't cope. So he ended up with his head between his knees um, in, 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 in quite a state. Mm -hmm. his, his, he's very sensitive, like you said. His response to this demonstration of extreme violence was to kind of hide away from it all, kind of have a little bit of a breakdown. And the reason I had told you the story originally was because for me what was so crucial about it was when a boy at school breaks down in some way, at least when I was at school, it would be something where you got teased because you couldn't cope. Yeah. Right? That's what it would have been seen as. But in his case, his community rallied around him with love and they gave him the support. Classmates. His friends and his, the broader, the, the, everybody, everybody really just, they gathered around him and they wanted to protect him and they gave him love. And what could have been an experience of shame mm -hmm. became something that he actually found extremely empowering. He made himself very vulnerable through this sensitivity and this extreme response to the violent language and the demonstration of violence. And, you know, in, the, in, in our macho culture, the boys would be going, I want to do this, you know, which is what the response was. But he was the one who he, he couldn't cope. Mm -hmm. And instead of being shamed for that, mm -hmm. he was given love. And for him, that experience was really extremely empowering. He still doesn't really want to talk about it because He's like, this is my response, you know. But when we kind of unpacked it afterwards, 
He was quite blown away by how his community just gave him love and support and made him feel good about himself, mm. and that he could be free. And that was... That's, in the, that's amazing to me. Uh, now, I don't want to make this very long, and, and, but I have to ask two essential questions. One, um, what do you think is going to... In other words, in the future, do you think that he will feel like crying or doing that will bring, will bring love or support? I'm just asking, I'm not a psychiatrist, no, 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 this, it's just a question. But the bigger question I have, that instructor that was there, he must have been there too. What was his response? You don't know. Mm -hmm. I just better ask him. I don't know. But your, your first question is an interesting one because what I'm seeing is mm -hmm. that what he's learning is that it's okay to be him, self. It's okay to express himself in a way that is true to him. He doesn't have to put on a mask. If that's how he's feeling at the time, He's in a space where he can express that feeling and be supported in it. And I hope that you know, he can do the same for other people in his environment, especially this age, this preteen, mm -hmm. they're particularly sensitive to how they are seen. Yeah. So the fact that he could be so raw and vulnerable and honest and safe, I mean, that for me is an incredible uh, and thing. Of course, nobody was cell phone yet to, to, to put it on. Thing. Yeah, not at that level. Yeah. Yeah. The cell phones are taken away. Yo, how old is he now? He's 11. He's 11. Now, here's the, the I, I would say the, the last question sort of like it seems to me because every time I like I said I would hear these special forces these mercenaries being tra training police forces around the world and militaries around the world now it seems to me I'm not sure but then, I'm not a conspiracy but I'm a logical logically where would this lead in my brain it would lead it would mean that somehow they've gotten into the school system so they can train their mercenaries at 11 or whatever it is, so by the time they're 18, ready to go, or 17, they want to go someplace and do whatever gal or rip or whatever they're doing. I mean, this is, I don't know, I'm just saying, and this needs to be, I'm, I'm not, a, well, not really a journalist, I'm an audio dramatist. Only thing I can do is put it in an audio drama someplace, you know, about something like that. But I don't know how, this This, this has got to be getting out. Somehow, somebody's got to be talking. The fact that this particular form of, of fighting is being introduced at primary school makes me think that the people behind this martial arts form mm -hmm. have actually done a deal with the school because this, this school mm -hmm. has got a network of schools. They have a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. And the whole program is that these extramurals are things that the kids pay for. I think that these people have paid the school mm -hmm. to get access, which makes me think this is not simply an extramural activity. This is a strategic intervention. Mm -hmm. For what end goals? I don't know. You know I could, there's all sorts of possibilities. But it, it, it makes me feel very uncomfortable because especially in our context, South Africa, trauma, violence. Mm -hmm. To have a form of martial art that's clearly not just about self-discipline, but is overtly aggressive, is an inappropriate choice for a primary school, even a high school, but it's really for kids. Yeah. Let me say this last, or state this last thing. I think, I don't know how people are going to solve this problem, but I think the first thing, the number one thing has to be done, the entire martial arts community, I'm talking about, you know, the, the Qigong, the Judo, the whatever, the, the, the mm. Tai Chi, the whatever, the, the, the kicking thing, the whatever it is, you know, the, the Muay Thai, everything. Everybody who really is a martial arts and knows about this, but they need to say, you cannot call this a martial art. Mm. I'm talking that community. Those do, I don't know if they do call it a martial art. I, mean, I don't know either. I'm just saying, if, they, if they're doing something like that, mm. even if they don't call it a martial art, somebody's going to call it a martial art because mm. that's, that's the catchphrase. Mm. Well, you just learn another martial art. It's just like, it's just like Tai Chi, you know? So anyway, so I, that's my only thing. I, I would try to get some sort of a, a martial arts association to say, hey, do you condone this? They're using your, they're using your forms of discipline. Say, they're, they're, they're like you when it's really not about self, it's about... Uh, yeah. Okay, look, um, thank you so much for this. It was very important to me because this is the second most distressing thing I've heard in the last month. Mm. The other one was, I, I think I sent you a thing, but they're finding plastic in like placentas or wherever they were, or ambient sex, whatever, they're finding plastic yeah. in women's things. So I'm, I'm thinking they're trying to destroy the coming generation, and now the generation's already here, they're trying to, well, kill them off. If you don't, you know, oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. You know, trying to get you the culture of violence. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, man.